Hi, good morning to one and all. So this is the part two of tooth preparation lecture. So the name is complete cast metal crown, metal ceramic crown, and all ceramic crown preparation. Okay, so we are going to cover certain details about all three crowns, and we'll talk in detail about the PFM crowns. Okay, so coming to the learning objective for the same. Okay, uh, so first one is to summarize the recommended armamentarium for uh, metal crown, PFM crown, and all ceramic crown. I discussed a disadvantage, advantage, indication, contraindication for each of the following. Uh, recall step-by-step -step procedure, the preparation, the interior and the posterior preparations. Okay. Okay, coming to the armamentarium, that is the material which is required for a full metal crown preparation. So you need a handpiece, you need a 171 elbow, round and tapered burr. So you can see the photos which are here. Shot needle diamond burr, torpedo diamond, torpedo burr, and red utility wax. Okay, and you can see the photos. All right, coming to the metal ceramic crown preparation, same. Uh, few will always remain the same, you know. Okay, so handpiece, the 171L burr, round and tapered diamond, flat and tapered diamond, shot needle diamond, torpedo diamond, torpedo burr, red utility wax, okay. For all ceramic, you need a handpiece, 171L burr, round and tapered diamond, flat and tapered diamond, shot needle burr, and red utility Okay. So just know those arm and mentarium and you use it daily so you understand that we are using those burrs and handpiece and everything every day. Okay, coming to the advantages of all the three of the following. So for better, yes, gives great retention and resistance form. It has high strength. It has a good protection to the teeth because it gives a coverage. It is long lasting removal of less tooth structure because you do the least amount of preparation in the full metal preparation. Coming to the PFM crown, um, in this preparation, you uh, have other various advantages, which is it has high strength and it has good aesthetics as well, because this is a metal reinforced with a porcelain layer on the top. It is less expensive than an all ceramic crown. It has good retention. We are doing it daily, guys, here. Students are doing it daily. Uh, it permits easy correction of the axial wall. So, uh, yes, you can correct all the walls and uh, the preparation can be even throughout and it can be done well, okay? Um, for all ceramic, you have excellent aesthetics. So, aesthetics is... Uh, it cannot be compared with any, any other crown. There are many types of all ceramic crowns which are done. Um, it has good tissue response even for subgenital restorations. It is more conservative for facial walls rather than a PFM preparation. All right. Coming to disadvantages for full metal. Yes, it has very poor aesthetics because yes, there is metal. Yes, there are chances of metal allergy, difficulty to do test. Vitality of the tooth, especially by electric pulp testing. Uh, in PFM, not perfect aesthetics, but it's acceptable, guys. Sometimes metallic margins are visible. Translucency is much lesser than an all ceramic. Ants may discolor porcelain, so yes, uh, there are some discolorations sometimes in the porcelain layer, and porcelain might fracture. This is common finding in the PFM crown, which is seen, which sometimes bring the patients here to us. All ceramic, there it has a reduced uh, strength. Uh, yeah, sorry, compared to PFM, yes, actually it is. It's more fragile. Uh, requires skills for preparation. Okay, it's extremely cri critical and uh, it has to be done uh, properly. Otherwise, you're going to damage more structure of tooth than uh, you're supposed to prepare. Okay, least conservative preparation, brittle in nature of restoration. Okay. Coming to the indications, so these are the, some general main indications. There are many more. I've just written four to five indications. So you can read more in detail from the books. Okay, so for metal crown, indications are a tooth with extensive disruption due to caries or trauma in order just to protect the fractured tooth so a segment. It can be done. So a tooth with large amalgam restoration in order to protect the remaining tooth structure and amalgam from fracture. Okay. Endodontically treated teeth, so RC treated teeth, 
can you can ideally do any of the crown of the following but yes one of the indications is this when ma maximum retention resistance is needed as in tooth with short crowns this is indicated recontouring of tooth as in uh, you know tooth receiving a class removal partial dental if required it can be done okay contraindication if high aesthetic is in need uh, uh, sorry if high aesthetic need is demanded then obviously it's not indicated when less than maximum retention and resistance is necessary when a more conservative crown the three-fourth crown right can be done like the veneers and you know things can be done yes this is contraindicated when the carries index okay coming to the indication and contraindication for the pfm crown guys okay so indications usually is teeth that require complete coverage okay aesthetics is one of the main concerns especially anterior teeth and uh, patients concern okay extensive extensive tooth destruction which results in caries or trauma endodontically treated tooth need for recontouring of any of the walls or minor mal inclinations also can be corrected if all ceramic crown is contraindicated okay so contraindication is active caries obviously you cannot give untreated periodontal disease so a uh, periodontal status has to be stable for any of the fpd indicated cases otherwise fpd is not indicated young patients with large chambers high risk of pulp exposure objectives met with more conservative preparation okay like composite resin or porcelain laminate veneers again so if conservative preparation can be done then we should not be doing crowns okay and then the crowns automatically become contraindicated okay so for indications oh uh, sorry this is for all ceramic crowns so indication high aesthetic requirements a considerable proximal carry so this works very well for the coverage and giving the strength to uh, restoring you know one surface of the tooth which is gone from proximal caries uh incisal edge reasonably intact and yes uh, this will give you more translucency it has more shades it looks more um aesthetic so yes endodontically treated teeth with post and cores favorable distribution of occlusal load and also specially indicated in the anterior teeth yes anteriorly it's um a more aesthetic zone so the patient do prefer this contraindication when superior strength is warranted and a metal ceramic is more appropriate so yes there are places where you can just do a pfm and you don't need to go through the long route guys so it can be done extensive carries insufficient coronal tooth structure for support so no you know uh it will break off it'll fracture off and uh, not required Thin teeth, facial lingually, contraindicated guys, because you have to do a little bit more amount of preparation compared to the other preparations. Unfavorable distribution of occlusion or bruxism. All right, so you just uh, know those things. Okay, so now we are just going to focus on the PFM. Yes, we have done it, guys. Um, and we are just going to uh, focus on PFM, that is a porcelain fused metal crown, also known as a metal ceramic crown, consists of a ceramic layer bonded to a thin cast metal coping that fits over the tooth preparation. Okay, so it combines the strength and accurate fit of cast metal crown with the cosmetic effect of a ceramic crown. So basically, you can say it's giving the strength of both and uh yeah so it's it's basically covering both the crowns together right and it has greater longevity okay coming to the anterior porcelain fused metal crown okay so pfm the interior guys so almost the same armamentarium uh lab knife with uh 25 number blade so this is for the silicon putty accelerator this is for the putty index which you take I am not covering the putty index in this lecture. Uh, you can definitely read it in the book. Hand piece is required flat and tapered diamond burr, small wheel diamond burr, long needle diamond burr, torpedo diamond, torpedo burr, radial fissure burr, and a biangle chisel if required, guys actually don't use it okay so coming to the steps so these are the basic steps i'll be covering the e steps in detail and i'll be showing you photos for the same so a uh, first is to make um a depth orientation roofs okay 
uh, yeah, this is done, then incisal reduction is taken place, then you take care of the labial reduction, which is done in two planes, lingual reduction also done in two planes, and then merged, uh, then in initial proximal reduction, uh, lingual axial reduction, axial finishing, axial and shoulder. Okay, so step one is placement of deep orientation grooves on labial and incisal surfaces. So you can see incisal and these are the labial surfaces. Yes, so we are using a flat and tapered diamond burr. Okay, using a flat and tapered diamond burr, they are means of judging the amount of tooth structure to be removed. So you should embed the burr and you can measure the depth. Okay, full diameter of the instrument of known dimension is sunk into the teeth okay uh, so the depth of the reduction can be checked with the uncut surface of the tooth okay so this can be marked and uh, you can orient it in two ways because there is a facial plane and incisal plane okay so there is a and you can do it in two planes okay labial groove should be cut into two sets parallel to the gingival half of the labial surface and then to the incisal half, okay? So these are the two planes. The depth should be 1.2 mm deep, okay? Incisal groove should be cut all the way through the incisor and should be 2 mm gingival, okay, all right? To achieve adequate reduction without encroaching the pulp, facial surface is prepared into two planes. So guys, again, two planes, yeah. Reducing the facial surface and extension of gingival plane can cause the incisal edge to protrude, resulting in bad shade match and or contoured block. So, reducing the facial surface and extension to of uh, incisal plane can cause the surface to be too tapered and close to the pulp. So, if you either reduce the gingival or the incisal plane too much, it's going to cause problem in um, exposure of the pulp. So, an over contouring or reduction. So, you should have a sub and do it into two planes guys okay so it is important to reduce the label surface in two planes for the pfm okay so if only one plane is required it can be done uh this is over contoured guys okay and here it's kind of encroaching the pulp now okay this is too straight okay so you are supposed to have two planes reduction Coming to step two, which is the incisal reduction. So using a flat and tapered diamond burr here, okay? And then you can just reduce it. Done first to allow easy instrument access to the axial surface and gingival finishing lines. Inadequate reduction will cause poor incisal translucency in finished uh, restorations, okay? So um, we need to have some uh, clearance, guys, yes? So basically incisal reduction to give incisal clearance okay okay so step three is the labial reduction okay so incisal portion you can see that with using uh, again a flat and tapered diamond burr um all tooth surface planed off to the depth of the orientation groups okay so you're supposed to just plane it off and make it into one plane okay so the gingival portion as you can see Using flat and tapered diamond burr tooth structure plane off to the depth of orientation group. So it's reduced around labioproximal line angles to the 0.1 mm lingual to the proximal contacts. Okay, so from here to here, basically. Okay, so that's coming to the lingual reduction, guys. So in the lingual reduction, what you do is using a small wheel diamond burr. A minimum 0 0.7 clearance with the opposing teeth has to be there. So this is the clearance we are talking about, okay? When we occlude. Uh, those portion of the lingual surface which will bear the ceramic veneer should be, or ceramic, uh, the, the ceramic portion there, sorry, okay? Should be 1 mm clearance, okay? Should have, guys, okay? So a junction between the cingulum and the lingual wall should not be over reduced, okay? So junction between the cingulum and the lingual wall should not be over reduced okay it may affect the retention guys okay all right coming to the initial proximal preparation okay so the mesiodistal so long needle diamond burr is used so what we do is we cut through and through distally and mesially in the long axis just near the edges and we nick off the uh, the enamel lip or the remnant of the enamel 
uh, from the probe or from the instrument. Okay, all right. So by that you reduce the chances of uh, nicking the or injuring the rest, the adjacent teeth proximal area. Coming to lingual axial reduction, so using a torpedo diamond burr, reduce the lingual axial and also some portion of the lingual surface, okay? So lingual axial reduction is done, okay? Yes, lingual and axial reduction. Now coming to the ling lingual and axial finishing, so it can be done by a torpedo burr, okay? Done to accentuate the chamfer finishing line on the lingual and proximal axial surfaces, okay? So you can see the margin form, okay? Axial and shoulder finishing line. So using a radial fissure burr, um, the, to smoothen the labial surface and form a radial shoulder finishing line, all angle and edges of the preparation are rounded, okay? So to facilitate the seeding of the restoration, okay guys? So usually you can just give a shoulder all around margin and uh, uh, yeah. And then you can do a finishing, the finishing burr, the yellow band burrs, okay? The cutting burrs are the red band, the blue band and the green band burrs, okay? Finishing has to be done. And yes, guys, the amount of taper has to be given in these restoration, okay? So you can give six degrees taper and uh, the preparation cannot be really parallel, okay? Right. For the posterior uh, PFM, okay, now, so coming to the armament, they are almost the same, guys. Lab knife with 25 number blade, silicon putty accelerator, handpiece, flat and taper, diamond burr, shot, shot needle, diamond burr, torpedo diamond, torpedo burr, 158012 radial fissure burr rs1 biangle chisel okay we are not using okay steps they're almost the same but of course in relation to the uh, surface in the proximal uh, sorry in the posterior team okay so coming to the first one that is a planner occlusal reduction functional cusp bevel Facial reduction, proximal, uh, proximal axial reduction, lingual axial reduction, and finishing facial, axial, and shoulder finishing. Okay, coming to step one, that is occlusal reduction, guys. So you can see there are a lot of planes, grooves, and fissures, which has to be followed. A uh, occlusal preparation for any posterior teeth, maxillary mandible cannot be flat, guys. They have to follow the grooves and the cusp and the fissures which are present, okay? So 1.5 mm of clearance on functional cusp and 1 mm on the non-functional cusp, okay? So for the maxillary, the functional cusp would be, guys, which one? Yes. So it would be the palatal for the upper, for the maxillary, and for the mandibular, it would be the buccal cusp, okay? which is the functional cusp, okay? So, yes, slight uh, differences there. Depth orientation grooves are placed on the occlusion surface with round and tapered diamond, okay? So you put the depth orientation groove and then you merge it, okay? Yeah. Okay, so round and tapered, uh, um, yeah, sorry, round and tapered diamond is used to place the grooves on the ridge and primary grooves on the occlusion surface, okay? If there is already some clearance with the opposing tooth, because of the malposition groove, should not be made as deep, okay? So, yeah, okay, so that can be judged clinically. It depends case to case. So, guys, that's how you place the groove, and then you merge the grooves, okay? And then you get the clearance. Okay, the occlusion reduction should follow the configuration uh, of the geometric inclines that make the crucial surface of any posterior teeth okay so you should just follow all the inclines okay there should be no different anatomy guys okay yeah okay so step two is the functional cusp reduction so functional cusp bevel with round and tapered diamond has to be done uh, the wide bevel is uh, placed on the functional cusp orientation groove will also help in the reduction okay so you can see that now they're starting with the, the functional cusp reduction okay okay and of course there is a bevel which is given guys okay functional bevel is integral part of the crucial reduction okay failure to place the bevel would produce thin casting and poor morphology 
has to be given there is an importance okay occlusal clearance is very important guys it can be check checked by wax so you can tell the patient to bite on the wax and if you see that there are holes that means uh, the clearance is not adequate and uh, if there is uh, no um, holes and it's uh, uh, not perforating the wax that means it is fine so red utility wax is used okay step three is facial reduction guys so buckle and lingual walls are reduced with the round and tapered diamond the sides of a diamond will produce the desired axial reduction while the tips will form the chamfer okay so the tip also has a cutting edge and the surface also has a cutting edge okay so whichever finishing line you're looking for you can make it properly and use the desired burr and the buckle and lingual uh, wall reduction has to be taken place okay in the inclines of the teeth guys so you're not going to create a new anatomy okay so there you can see guys okay a better view okay coming to the proximal reduction okay so that's step four, initial proximal axial reduction with short needle diamond followed by a round and tapered, okay? So these are the two birds you are following. You can see that the proximal reduction is going the same. You can follow the same principle. Nick off from here, make a cut and nick off from the instrument so you do not injure the adjacent teeth. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, step six is the facial axial reduction. So again, a seating groove can be given like that from uh, 171 L burr. So that's the number of the burr. Uh, and then you can reduce it. If you don't want to, you can just uh, uh, reduce it in a hole, guys. Okay? In surface. Okay. So this is a uh, preparation of a bridge. So you can appreciate, guys, the occlusal view, the bird eye view. The lateral view and a closer view okay yeah so guys uh, one last thing as I want to summarize in one line I have told this to uh, every student who does the preparation guys so the tooth preparation is the miniature version of the actual tooth so we need to preserve the whole, the all the anatomy the grooves cus fossas Singulum, everything as it is. It there cannot be any sharp line angle, point angles. Everything has to look merged and smoothened, and uh, occlusion cannot be flat, guys. Okay, and um, it has to follow the proper anatomy. Okay, but in a reduced version, so you cannot create a new anatomy or you cannot flat out the anatomy. Okay. So guys, for reference textbooks, you read textbooks on FPD, which is uh, Schillenberg and Rosensteel, okay? So those are the standard uh, textbooks for FPD, Fixed Partial Dentures. Refer to them, guys, for any further questions. Um, we are here on uh, uh, floor 20 in our Prosto Lab, Polyclinic 3. Come and ask us questions, okay? And read, guys. Okay, thank you so much for patient listening.